In this episode, we're going to continue our look at the Refinery Content Management System. So if you haven't already, watch the previous episode on Refinery to get up to speed. In that episode, we used Refinery to make this site for a piano store. It has a nice looking homepage and another page for displaying more information about the store's location. But what I would like to do is add a section to the site for browsing the pianos. But I don't simply want to just list the, site, the piano statically on a page. Instead, I want to store the pianos in the database and then manage them through the Refinery's admin section. So in addition to the tabs displayed at the top here, I want another tab for managing the piano records. Now to do this, it helps to have a better understanding of how Refinery works internally. Now each of these tabs are implemented using a separate Rails engine. So that means the engine handles the admin side of the information and also the public side of displaying that information to the user. And you can see this if you check out the source code for Refinery, there are several directories here that contain a Rails engine. For example, you have your pages and images and the dashboard and authentication contains the users tab and the resources contains the files tab. So inside of each of these is a Rails engine. So this makes Refinery very modular. You can easily extend it by adding your own engine. And that's what we're going to do here. I want a section for managing pianos and displaying them to the user. So let's make a pianos engine. And Refinery comes with a generator for doing just this. It's called Refinery Engine, and it's similar to a scaffolding. So you follow it by the name of the resource, such as piano. And for the attributes, uh, let's say I want a name, uh, dimensions column, and a manufacture date. And how about something to determine whether or not it's an upright piano. And I would also like to attach a photo to each record. So if you pass an image as a type, uh, Refinery will automatically handle that for you. And I also want a description, so let's make that a text column. So this generated an engine for us, and it placed it under Vendor Extensions Pianos, and it also gave us some instructions to run. But before I do that, let's take a look at what it did to the gem file for this application. So if I open up the gem file of this app and take a look at the bottom, you can see it added this line to the bottom here called Refinery CMS Pianos, and this is a gem that points to the vendor extensions path. So this is really interesting. Not only did this generate an engine, it also turned it into a gem which we require inside of our Rails application. So this means it's very easy to take this engine and turn it into a public gem that you can use in other applications. And you can see there are several commented out gems here which are basically the same thing. Each one is a separate engine for extending refinery such as adding a blog, a search, and so on. Now, since this new extension isn't really part of this Rails application, we need to run a few commands to get it set up for this specific app. So first we'll just run Bundler, and then next we'll run this generator that the extension provides. This ends up copying over the migration file for adding pianos to the database, and it adds some content to the seeds file. And if you check out that seeds file, you can see it added this line here for loading the seeds for our pianos engine. Now what this will do is add a new page to Refinery for displaying the pianos to the user. But you can customize the engine and have it load whatever seed data you want. So we still need to migrate the database and then load that seed data. And that's it, our engine is all set up. So before we get into customizing this engine, let's see what it provides for us out of the box. So after restarting the Rails application and reloading this, pian this dashboard page, we now have a Pianos tab for managing and adding pianos. And this includes a form with fields for managing the different attributes that were mentioned in the generator, including a photo. You could just click here and then select a photo that is inside of your library or upload one. And the description text field is a complete WYSIWYG editor, just like for the page content. So I'm just going to fill in some records behind the scenes so that we have some data to work with. There we go. Now we have some pianos, which by the way, we can easily reorder if you want to change how they are sorted. Next, let's take a look at the pages to see what was added in the database seed. And you can see a couple new pages added. The about page showed up again because we ran the database seed, so we can just delete that. And we have a pianos page, which displays the pianos. So the content of this page will be handled by the engine. So let's take a look and see what that provides. 
Well, we now have a pianos menu option. So when we go there, you can see a simple list of piano records. And when we click on one, we can see all the details for that piano in addition to the giant image here. So this obviously could use some improvement. So let's see what's involved in customizing our engine. So first I'll open up the vendor extensions pianos directory in TextMate. So here's the directory structure for our pianos engine. And it's almost like a mini little Rails application we have going on here with an app directory and a config directory and so on. Now, if you aren't familiar with engines, check out episode 277 for more details. Here, I'm just going to focus on the views directory because that's what I want to customize. And so you can see there are some uh, namespacing going on here, refinery pianos directory. And inside we have both a pianos directory and an admin pianos directory. This can get a little bit dizzying with the word pianos everywhere, but just keep in mind that the admin pianos directory is for the views relating to the refinery admin pages and the pianos directory here is just for the views for the public side of the site that the user sees. For example, if we check out this form partial, you can see it's the same form that's used inside of the refinery admin section, so we can customize what uh, form fields are displayed in there. But if we check out the piano show page, you can see that that displays information to the public user about a given piano. I'm just going to work on the public side of the site for now and leave the admin section alone. All right, so let's work on this page here, which displays the details for a given piano. Notice that refinery is a little bit interesting in the way it works. It builds up the content using content for blocks, and then it ends up rendering this refinery content page partial, which ends up redisplaying and distributing that content out throughout the page. Now you can stick with this kind of approach if you want, but I just find it easiest to not worry about the content for blocks or this partial and just kind of mimic the way Refinery displays pages. So I'm just going to take all of this and just replace it with this bit of HTML code to display a given piano. So let's try this out. Reloading this page that displays a piano and now it looks much nicer. And we could just go back and forth to see the various pianos. Looks great. Now let me explain some of the code I used for this template. Uh, the two section tags at the top here mimic what Refinery generates for its pages. And for the image here, I'm using this image foo helper method that Refinery provides and passing the piano photo to it and the dimensions I want for the image. And I can also pass in other options such as the HTML class. And for the piano description here, I'm using the raw method because this is going to contain HTML because it generates it using the WYSIWYG editor in the form. And then finally, we have the link to go back to the list of pianos. And the path for this is a little bit cumbersome. It's refinery.pianos, pianos path. And the reason for this is refinery. is just the prefix for the refinery engine. And the pianos is a namespace for this specific engine. And then the second pianos means the pianos controller, basically. So a lot of namespacing going on here, but just everything inside of this specific engine should be prefixed with this then everything else looks the same as a normal uh, URL helper method in Rails. Next, let's improve the index template that displays that list of pianos. So we can find that at this index template here. And we'll do basically the same thing as instead of using content for, I'll just paste in the exact HTML code I want to use, looping through each of the pianos. So we can see what this looks like by reloading this page. And now we have a nice detailed view listing all of the pianos, which we can visit a given piano by clicking more information. That takes us to that show page and going back to the list of pianos. Looks great. Now a quick note here, notice that each of the piano images are alternating between left and the right side. And I'm getting that effect by using the cycle helper method. And this isn't specific to refinery, it's just a helper method that Rails provides for cycling through multiple values in a loop. It's a really handy way to get something to alternate positions. There are a few things left to do to polish up this site, such as making the Browse Pianos link on the homepage. So I'll do that really quick by going to Refinery and editing our homepage, and then turning the Browse Pianos section in the body into a link and have that point to our Pianos section and insert that and save it. Now I also want to reorder these pages so that the pianos page shows up before the store location page 
in the menu. And then one more thing I want to do to the Pianos page is in the Advanced section, when I edit the page, I can change the menu title. I'm going to change it to Browse Pianos so it matches what's on the home page. So now when I visit my site again, the menus now match what I expect, and I have a link on my home page which goes to the Browse Piano section. Yay! So now this website is pretty much complete, but let me finish up with a few tips on how you can override some of Refinery's functionality. For example, let's say we're browsing the source code of this page, and perhaps there's some HTML that Refinery generates that we would prefer to change. For example, the way that it generates three different CSS files that need to be loaded, instead we can load these formatting and theme CSS files inside of the application CSS file through the Rails asset pipeline. Now if you want to override some of Refinery's functionality, the first step is to browse through the source code and find the file you want to override. In this case, it's under Views, Refineries, and a Head Partial, which contains the content inside of the head tag that I want to change. And then we can override that file by going to our Rails app and running this rate command called Refinery Override. And then since this is a view, we say view equals and then the path to that file. So in this case, it's refinery slash underscore head. Now this will actually find two files because there's multiple files that begin with that path. There's head and header.html.erb. So I'll just remove this second one here because we don't really want to override that one. So now going into the view directory of my Rails application, I now have a refinery directory here where I can override that head file. So I want to change this so that it doesn't add formatting or theme CSS files in here. And I also don't want it to add the home CSS file either because I could add all those through the asset pipeline by just changing my application CSS file directly. Here I could just tell it to uh, require formatting and require theme to do the same thing. And now if I visit my application and check out the source, you can see it now just loads the application CSS file, but it has exactly the same effect, just fewer files to load. Now another way to add behavior to Refinery is through decorators. Now you may notice there is a decorators directory in your Rails application, and this is designed to extend Refinery's controllers or models. So let's say we want to add a before filter to the pages controller that Refinery has. We could add a new file here, and let's call it pages controller decorator.rb. So here we can take the Refinery uh, pages controller class and add some behavior through class eval. So let's say there's some custom authorization I want to do on the pages. So I could do that through a before filter here. Let's call it authorize and make that private uh, authorize method. And just for example's sake, let me have this uh, render some text saying uh, not authorized. So now reloading this application, it now says not authorized because it triggered that before filter. So I'll leave this commented out, but that's just an example of how you can extend Refinery's existing classes. Well, we're nearing the end of this episode, but there's so much more to Refinery that I haven't covered here. So here are a few tips on what you can explore next. First of all, go to your gem file and try on commenting some of the gems here. They add some really great features to Refinery. Also, check out the comments inside of the Refinery config files. There's a lot that you can do to customize the experience. Also, there are a lot of goodies inside of the engine that we generated. Be sure to check out the controllers and models to get some neat insight in how Refinery works internally. Also, it comes with a full spec suite, so try that out as well. And finally, check out the Refinery CMS site. There are a lot of great resources here, including a full list of guides that go into further detail than what I have here, and also a long list of engines that are available to use to extend Refinery. Well, that's it for this episode on Refinery CMS. Thanks for watching.